Hi guys, I'm Adrian, I've been a developer for 10 years and have been building developer tools for the last four. Today I want to show you a resource that will help you and your team save loads of time. It's called Avo and it helps you build the back office of your apps 10 times faster. Today I'm going to build a blog admin panel ready for production in less than 20 minutes. Let's go! So we're going to start by creating a new Rails app. Uh, it's going to use uh, Postgres as a database. You can add Avo to your existing app. Uh, the migration is fairly easy. Uh, you can move things over over time, or you can uh, use Avo in a new app. Now let's add all the files to uh, Git to see what we're going to end up with at the end of the video. Now we're going to install Avo from a Rails Bytes template. This will add Avo to your gem file, it will run bundle install and create an Avo initializer for you to get started. It will also add an Avo route to your routes file. So it is going to mount Avo engine under Avo configuration root path. So by default this is Avo, but it can, you can change it to admin or dashboard or app or whatever you feel like is best. We're going to keep Avo for now. I'm going to use the pro license to show you some goodies. So let's set up the database and start uh, working on our app. First, let's create the post model. It's going to have a title and a body. We'll also need a, uh, an Avo resource. Uh, the way Avo works, you map each model to a resource and run the migrations. We need to start a server and go to localhost 3000. Next, we'll navigate to Avo. And this is the Avo admin panel. Um, the get started page, this is something that you'll only see in development. It tells you a little bit about Avo and what we're planning to do next. So on the left sidebar, there's the post entry. Uh, you'll see there are no posts available. So let's try and create one. So you'll see that the page is empty. That's because we haven't added any fields to our resource. The way Avo works is that it uses that resource file as a configuration. So we are going to add the title field as text and the body as a text area. So now if we hit refresh, we'll see this beautiful form where we can set the title and the body of the post. When we hit save, we get redirected back to the show page. And if we go to the index, we'll see a list of all the posts. But if we go back to the form, this text area is not going to help us very much. So we're going to change this to a tricks field. So now we have a what you see is what you get field where you can better edit this uh, content. You can make it bold or italic or whatever you need. When we hit save, you'll see that the tricks uh, field is hidden by default because that could be like a big body of text. And the same thing on index, you will not see the big body of text on that uh, listing. But maybe you want to show it. So let's try something. Let's add a new method on the post model. We'll call it excerpt and we'll just truncate the body. Next, let's add this field to our resource. So field excerpt, because we're going to use that method name and as text. And if we hit refresh, we get an excerpt of that body. But the excerpt contains the markup as well. So we need to sanitize that. So we'll use action view base to sanitize that and then truncate it. Cool. This is better. Now let's see that when we go to the show page, uh, we have uh, duplicated uh, fields. So we'll see the except in the body and we want to hide that. We can go back to the resource and on the except field, we're going to say that we only want to see it on index. So only on index. So it's present on index and it's hidden on show and on edit. One of the common things that we like to do in apps is to search our records. So Avo comes with a built-in search interface and we only need to enable it and get a gem to help us. So we usually use ransack, but you can use whatever you think it's best. So I'm going to add ransack to the gem file. I'm going to run bundle install and restart the server. Before enabling the search, let's create a few more posts. So second post and third post. As I said, the search interface is built in. We just need to enable it in each resource. So I'm going to go into the post resource, uncomment this piece of code, and we're going to tell Ransack to search by title contains the params that we're, we're giving it. Now, when we go back, we have a local search just for posts. And if we start searching, we're going to get the posts back or we get a global search where we can have all of the searchable resources. 
you might have noticed that all of the records that we got back uh, they only display the id and that's not very helpful so that's because we haven't told the resource what is the title attribute what is the name attribute so when we change that to the title now we can see that in search we have the title of that post and the same thing happens here we added the title in the breadcrumbs in it and in the page title usually in blogs uh, posts belong to a category so let's go uh, create that category model and resource so we're generating the category model it's going to have a title and a description similar to a post and then we're going to uh, generate the other resource as well now let's go and configure that category so we we'll go to the category resource file and let's add those fields so we add the title field and the description we're going to keep it simple the description is going to be a text area and that's it let's do the same and add the title as the resource title and enable search and we're going to search through the title of the category so title contains the query. We can also add like the description as well. Oh, okay, we gotta run the migrations. And then we have the categories. So let's try and create a new category. We'll call this technology and let's add another one and we'll call this bio. Now let's create the migration where we add the category ID to our posts and finally tie them together. Now let's add the belongs to category on a post and it has many on category and let's switch to the resource so we can add it the same way so we add a new field it's going to be called category and as belongs to so post belongs to a category now in the category resource we add the same reverse field so it has a field of posts as a has many now if we refresh the page we get the category column and no post belongs to any category and if we go on to the edit we can choose a category to attach it to so we get the technology category and the same way for bio category and we can switch to the bio category and on the bio screen we have access to all of the posts that belong to this category now we can attach new posts to this category and you may have noticed that on the attach screen we get a list of all the posts and maybe we don't want that that's not ideal so you want to take out the posts that are already attached we can do that by adding attach scope to the to that field this is going to be a lambda function and it's going to take the query and you can apply different um, changes to that query now we're going to need um, the posts that don't have the category id as the parent id and this parent id actually refers to that category so bio so all the posts that don't have the category id of two and we need uh, the other posts uh, so query where category ID is nil so all the posts that don't have a category or are not affiliated with this category we, we want all those now if we try it again and attach the post we'll see that we'll get just the hello world post that we haven't attached so far so hello world attach and now if we try it again we get nothing an empty list if we detach a post we'll be able to see it again under that um, drop down so from this screen we can also create other records so we'll create a new post you'll see that by default the category drop down is disabled because we're coming from that bio category let's write the title and save now this post is automatically attached to this category let's say that for the categories resource we want to show the number of posts that are in that category then we're going to go and create a new field it's going to be a computed field so it's posts count we don't have that in the database uh, we want to make it as text and i'm going to open a block here and this block will take the model as the first argument and this model is actually the category that we are referring to so we'll say model posts that count and when we refresh we get a count of all the posts for that category for each category you'll see that we'll we'll get that uh, visible on the show view but not on the edit view because it's a computed field and we cannot edit computed fields next let's go into posts and uh, add uh, this post to a different category and when i reload the page we see a column with all the categories associated for that post uh, for those posts but if we check the queries we'll see we'll have an n plus one problem because we're loading category for each post and we want to fix that and that's easily fixable with avo we just need to add the category to the includes option for the post resource that will instruct avo to eager load all the categories for the those posts by default so we'll see select categories where id 
is in. So we solve that performance issue. Now, most apps have users. Let's create a user model and resource. We'll create the user model. It's going to have a, a name and an email and the corresponding resource. If we refresh the page, we'll see we'll have no users and we try to create, we get the same empty screen because we haven't uh, configured the user resource. So let's add those fields, name as text, email as text, and let's try and add a few users. This is all good, but maybe we want to show images of our users. So let's go back to our resource and add a new field. We're gonna pick up the email from the database and we're going to use the Gravatar field, which is built into Avo. Now, if we refresh the page, we get an, a pretty avatar of that user. Uh, that's gonna be avail available on the show view as well as in the, on the index view. Another thing that we can do here is uh, make this field a link to the resource. So we'll add the link to resource true. And now when we go back to the page and click on those images, we'll see that it takes the, it takes us to the resource. That, so that makes it like a better experience for our customers. Now let's configure the search for the user's resource. We want to make it searchable by the name. When we search, we get back the IDs. So we now need to set the title of that resource. We'll set it to name. Now we get the name for the user's resource. So that's good. But maybe we want to make it even better. So we have this Gravatar field. Let's mark this as avatar and set it to true. Now, whenever we do a search, we get this nice image in our search item, but we can make it even better. Let's make the email as description. So now all the search results bring back that description as well. You can use that something else as a description. So I'll create a new computed field here. I'll just call it something. It's a text and I'll open up a block and I'll just gonna return a string. Something about this record with the ID of of, and you can access that record and I'm going to set it as description. Usually posts are linked to a user. So a user is an author of a post. So let's make that happen. I'm going to start by creating the migration for that. I'm going to add user ID on post. Next, I'm going to add the association on the models. So a user has many posts and the post belongs to a user. Next, let's do the same on the resource files. So we're going to add a new field, user as belongs to and posts as has many. Now, if we go and refresh the page, we'll see that under the user, we we'll have the post has many fields. So we can attach new posts. And when you go back to posts, we'll see that the user has been attached. But this user field, that doesn't sound right. It's actually an author. So let's change that. So name author and let's refresh the page. Yeah, that's better. So another common thing that blogs have are comments. You can attach a comment to a post or a page. So we'll make that a polymorphic reassociation. We'll give it a body, which is going to be a text and we'll attach it to a user as well, the author of the comment. So let's create the resource and check out the associations. So on the comment model, it belongs to a user and it belongs to commentable as a polymorphic. Next, if we switch to user, let's add this association has many comments and the same thing to our resource. Now, if we navigate to the users, we can see that Chris doesn't have any comments. And if we try to create one, there's no form because we don't have any fields. So let's add a field body as text area. Let's keep it simple. And and add the user as belongs to. If we refresh and try to save this comment, we'll see we'll get an error. So all validations error are automatically handled by Avo and they'll be beautifully presented to your users. And it's failing because we don't have a commentable field, so it cannot attach it uh, to a polymorphic association. So now we're creating a new field, commentable as belongs to. We're gonna mark it polymorphic as and tell it the name of the polymorphic association, commentable, and we need to add the types. So we'll make an array and I'll just paste in post. But if we want to support pages or categories or any, any other polymorphic association, any polymorphic model, we can do that. So now if I refresh, I get the command commentable dropdown, I select the post, and then I select the exact post that uh, Chris wants to, to comment on. Now if we save, we get that commentable field. But again, this is not very useful. So we need to add an excerpt just like we did to the post, but let's add it as a um, computed field. So field excerpt as text, we take the model and we truncate the body. They're much better. So you can see that which comment has been made. Now Avo has a lot of quirks and features and a lot of settings that you can play with. Now let's say we want to make it easier for our customers to reach the records. I'm gonna go into the Avo initializer and I'm going to enable this ID links to resource. Now, if I refresh the page, you'll notice that all IDs have been turned into a link. And when you click on them, they will link to that resource. 
So far I showed you how you can create a CRUD UI for your Rails app. Now maybe you want to display the data in another way. So let's explore dashboards for Avo. Now I'm going to go into my command line and generate a dashboard. Uh, Rails generate Avo dashboard dashi. This will add dashi to my sidebar. When we go inside, we'll see that it's an empty dashboard. If we go into the dashi configuration file, we'll see it's similar to how we configure a resource. So every dashboard has an ID, has a name, you can set a description, the number, num the number of columns it has, and if it's visible or not. And you can add the cards back here. Now let's generate a card. So Avo has three types of cards. The first time is metric. So this is the simplest one. So we generated the metric card, and if we check it out, it has an ID, it has a label, and a couple of other options. Most important part of a card is the query block or method. You can run a result inside and you set the result for that card. So let's go add it to our dashboard and see what we get. When we refresh the dashboard, we see that card, posts count, and we get that result of 101. Now if we go back to the configuration card, let's change that 101 to something else. There, now we have the post count. But let's do something else. I'm going to go back to the post resource and add another field that is going to point to the created app and is going to be a daytime field. I'm going to go to one post, edit it, and change the created at time to a month before and save. Now let's go back to the card file and configure it a little bit more. So I'm going to uh, enable initial range to 30 days and this ranges array. So now we get this drop down where we can select the range of data that we want to get from this card. If we go back to the query method, we can take advantage of that. So if range is present, we're going to return a subset of posts. So posts were created at is before the selected time. Now, if you go and change the drop down, you'll see that we won't get three posts for 30 days and four posts for 60 days. Next, let's create a chart key card. We'll call this post count over time. So if we check it out, it's similar to the other card. It does have another option, chart type, and you can set it line or bar or whatever you need. Next, if we go back to, if we go down to the query method, there's some dummy data, but we'll update it. Let's add it to the dashboard and you'll see that beautiful graph from just that configuration. Let's make it a little Little bit bigger so let's change to two columns and start deleting the dummy data so for this demo I'll just do a few quick queries to show the evolution of posts over time so we'll display the post created in May April and March so you see now in March we have three posts and in April and May we have four posts now let's create a partial card. So the partial card is uh, something that where you can break free and create whatever you need. You'll get one regular card and another partial, an HTML, an ERB partial, where you can add whatever you need. You'll have access to the dashboard, to the params, and other few goodies to compute your result. Let's add it to the dashboard and see how it looks. Okay, this is a little cramped, so let's make this a little bit bigger. So we'll say three columns. Cool. Next, I'll just paste in an iframe and I'm going to make it a little bit bigger so it will span on three rows, three columns, and I'm going to hide the header. When I hit refresh, you will see this big widget with embedded content. You have this beautiful map, you can scroll, you can move it, you can do pretty much whatever you need. So that's resources and dashboards for Avo, but you may need to display some other types of data that are not really in a CRUD interface or on a dashboard. So let's explore Avo tools. So let's generate a tool. And when you generate one, you'll get a few things. You'll get the tool route added to your routes file. It will point to a tools controller that we generate for you and a custom tool method. You can change those and move them to your controllers and, and you can change the logic however you want to. You'll also get access to a a sidebar partial uh, you'll be able to change what's displayed on the sidebar and you'll get access to a partial for that custom tool so here you can add whatever type of content you need by writing regular rails code you'll have access to your controller action you'll have access to your ERB and you can do whatever you need this way you can use Avo as a shell for your app bring all your users inside and they'll have the best experience. Next, you may have noticed that we, whenever we generate a new resource or a dashboard, it gets added to the sidebar in their own uh, special places, but you might want to customize that. Let's jump into the Avo initializer and uncomment the main menu settings. If we go and refresh the page, you'll not see any changes because that main menu is the same as the one generated in the initializer. But let's change that. Let's say we don't want to play all the resources in an alphabetical list. Let's output 
only the post resource and maybe add the comments and add the categories as well okay that's cool and what if we group them and add them to the blog blog group that's cool okay and let's bring back the users as well We'll create a new group for that and add the user resource and now everything is grouped in their own category we can even bring another dashboard inside the blog group so that's fine as well you can configure the menu however you need it to you get the point now if you go back and check the files that were added you'll see that there are just a few configuration files that are easily maintainable and there are no uh, real partials or business logic from avo littering your app avo is a separate gem sitting side by side with your app it doesn't pollute your app and it helps you ship apps 10 times faster this is just a quick demo of what you can build with avo it supports basic stuff like all the rails association types full interface localization, validation handling, to more advanced features like authorization, resource ordering, action filters, sorting, amazingly fast file uploads, multiple view types, plenty of custom content. There are just too many goodies to mention in one go. We sweat on the tiny details so you don't have to. Go out and try to build something amazing super fast today. Thank you.